SpaceX has done something that none of its peers could ever accomplish. In just a few years of existence, the company has completely reinvented the rocket engine and ushered in a new era of space exploration, a feat that none of its competitors have come close to achieving. Let's talk about SpaceX's revolutionary rocket engines and how they have single-handedly given humanity a chance at colonizing the solar system. SpaceX stands out in the aerospace industry for its remarkable ability to imagine unconventional ideas that others wouldn't even think of. What makes them truly unique is their capacity to turn these imaginative concepts into actual achievements. A prime illustration of this groundbreaking innovation is the Raptor engine used in the Starship spacecraft. The Raptor isn't just an ordinary rocket engine, it signifies a complete reimagining of rocket propulsion. SpaceX embarked on their rocket engine journey with the Merlin, their inaugural production engine. Through several iterations, particularly during the testing phase of the Falcon 1 rocket, different designs were explored. The Merlin 1C, a pivotal version, propelled the first successful Falcon 1 launch and continued to power the initial five Falcon 9 flights. Today, SpaceX employs the Merlin 1D engine across their entire Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy lineup. The Merlin engine's design emerged during SpaceX's early, turbulent days. Elon Musk's guiding principle for the Merlin was clear. Create a rocket engine that was both simple and cost-effective. Understanding how a rocket engine functions is not as complex as it may seem. Within the main body of a rocket, there are two tanks containing propellants, one for oxygen and the other for fuel. The oxygen tank is a constant because fire requires oxygen to burn. To transform oxygen into rocket propellant, it needs to be liquefied. This is achieved by supercooling oxygen to a cryogenic temperature below its boiling point of minus 183 degrees Celsius or minus 297 degrees Fahrenheit, where it stabilizes as a liquid. On the fuel side, the Merlin engine utilizes RP-1, a refined form of kerosene. RP-1 is cost-effective and remains in a liquid state at normal temperatures. When the rocket engine ignites, two pumps forcefully move both the oxygen and fuel into the combustion chamber. Here, these two liquids combine and ignite. This combustion process releases an immense amount of energy as the propellants burn and expand, creating pressure. All of this energy then exits the combustion chamber through the throat of the rocket engine. In the Merlin engine design, the fuel and oxygen pumps are driven by a component known as a gas generator. This gas generator functions like a small rocket engine, complete with its own combustion chamber and nozzle. However, instead of pointing directly downward, this mini engine directs its thrust into a turbine. The pressure generated from the combustion reaction spins the turbine, which is connected to a main shaft powering both the primary fuel and oxygen pumps. After the gas has powered the turbine, the excess is expelled through an exhaust pipe located on the side of the engine. This configuration is referred to as an open cycle gas generator, a concept dating back to the German V-2 rocket, the first long-range ballistic missile created in 1944. Elon Musk's request for the simplest and most cost-effective rocket engine led to the development of this ingenious and efficient design, making it a fundamental element of the Merlin engine. When it came to the Starship project, Elon Musk presented his engineers with a fresh mission to create the most intricate rocket engine ever conceived. He challenged them to achieve the highest thrust-to-weight ratio ever recorded and to fuel it with an entirely new rocket propellant, a departure from conventional practices. This directive signaled the end of relying on traditional 20th century designs. It was a moment demanding the reinvention of the rocket engine. The shift to the Raptor engine brought about a significant change in the fuel source. Instead of relying on kerosene, the Raptor now burns methane. Similar to oxygen, methane must be cooled to cryogenic temperatures to transform it into a suitable rocket fuel. This step adds complexity to the system, but the effort is justified. Kerosene, being a long-chain hydrocarbon, is challenging to fully combust and convert into gas. This incomplete combustion results in solid byproducts, essentially soot or black dust, which tend to accumulate inside the combustion chamber of a rocket engine. This soot can adhere to the engine's interior, causing a buildup known as coking. While in a disposable rocket engine, this isn't a significant concern as the engine is discarded after use. It poses a problem for reusable engines like the Merlin and the Raptor. In the case of the Merlin engine, this coking needs to be cleaned out between launches. However, with Elon Musk's ambitious plans for the rapid reusability of the Starship, the traditional approach of cleaning out coking between flights won't meet the stringent requirements of Starship's frequent reuse schedule. A new solution was needed for the more demanding reusability demands of the Starship program. When comparing the internal systems of the Raptor engine to the older Merlin, a notable distinction lies in the Raptor's design, known as a full-flow staged combustion cycle. This configuration involves a highly intricate arrangement of pumps, turbines, and plumbing components. In the Raptor engine cycle, the propellants move from the tanks to the main pumps and then directly into a set of gas generators. Here, both the fuel and oxygen have their individual turbines. This is a departure from conventional rocket engines, which typically utilize a single turbine, either on the oxygen side or in rare cases, on the fuel side. 
the Raptor engine stands out as the only one with dual gas turbines, a unique feature that sets it apart from all previous engines. When the cryogenic liquid reaches these turbines, it encounters a pre-burner, a miniature rocket engine. The pre-burner combusts the liquid just enough to transform it into a gas. However, since neither oxygen nor methane can combust on their own, there's a cross-connection between the two pre-burners. This connection allows a small amount of oxygen to mix with the methane flow and vice versa. Once combustion is achieved, the resulting exhaust gas is propelled into the turbine housing, spinning the turbine blades. These spinning blades, in turn, rotate the pumps, sending the now gaseous propellants into the combustion chamber at extremely high pressure. Here's an interesting twist. If the turbine spins the pump, and the pump sends the liquid into the turbine, how does the process get initiated in the first place? SpaceX utilizes equipment on the launch mount to externally spin start the turbines. This unique approach makes the Starship launch mount a crucial component, often referred to as stage zero for the main rocket, as it plays an integral role in the successful ignition of the booster. There are two crucial aspects to note here. Firstly, the Raptor system doesn't have an exhaust pipe for the gas to escape after the turbine, distinguishing it as a closed cycle compared to Merlin's open cycle. In the Raptor, all the pressure generated by the gas generators is contained within the system, creating extremely high pressure. This closed cycle design is particularly advantageous because it prevents the need to vent exhaust from the pre-burner. If kerosene were used as the fuel source, soot buildup inside the system would swiftly become problematic, rendering it ineffective. Methane's clean burning properties shine here, as there's no need to vent exhaust from the pre-burner. Secondly, there is no direct path from the fuel or oxygen pump to the combustion chamber in the Raptor engine. This means that all the methane and oxygen must pass through a pre-burner before reaching the chamber. This unique feature gives rise to the term full-flow stage combustion for the Raptor cycle. Now, both the oxygen and methane exit their turbines as extremely hot and high-pressure gases. When these gases meet in the combustion chamber, their collision results in the most efficient combustion possible. This gas-on-gas -gas reaction generates significantly more energy compared to a liquid-on-liquid -liquid reaction. Elon Musk has asserted that this reaction is over 99% efficient approaching the maximum efficiency allowed by physics. The Raptor engine, despite its relatively small size, boasts an astonishing amount of thrust. The current version, Raptor 2, generates a remarkable 230 metric tons of thrust at sea level. While it may not hold the title of the most powerful rocket engine, the Raptor is exceptionally potent considering its compact dimensions. Standing at just 3 meters tall and 1.5 meters wide at the nozzle, it's incredibly space efficient. SpaceX can fit 33 Raptors into the 9-meter diameter booster, demonstrating its compact nature. Compared to equivalent engines such as the RS-25 engines used in the Space Shuttle and adapted for the SLS moon rocket, the Raptor outshines them in terms of power-to-weight ratio. The RS-25 produces about 190 metric tons of thrust, but weighs nearly 3,200 kilograms, whereas the Raptor weighs only 1,600 kilograms. The secret to Raptor's impressive power-to-weight ratio lies in its ability to run the combustion chamber at significantly higher pressure than any other rocket engine globally. The Raptor 2 achieves a chamber pressure of 300 bars, equivalent to approximately 4,351 pounds per square inch. In contrast, the old Merlin engine operates at around 100 bars. Elon Musk's vision for the future of the Raptor engine involves simplification, making it more cost-effective and faster to produce. This approach is already evident in the transition from Raptor 1 to Raptor 2, where the new engine sports significantly fewer visible parts. But why the need for so many engines, especially if the rockets are fully reusable? Musk's perspective is forward-thinking. His ultimate objective with Starship is to make these rockets as commonplace as jet airliners are today. Starship's role is to connect not just countries, but celestial bodies within our solar system. What do you think? Has SpaceX perfected the rocket engine? And can it help make humanity a multi-planetary species? Uh, please share your thoughts in the comments below.